help us out just for a little while. And we appreciate that. Amen. And she's going to be also one of my pianists here in the next few weeks. Amen. When we get Sister Candace back in the saddle, we're going to split the services between them. So one of them won't get burned out as easy. Amen. Mark chapter 9, <clears throat> beginning with verse 1. He said to them, Verily I say unto you, there be, that there be some of them that stand here, which shall not taste of death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. And after six days, Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John, and leadeth them up into a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. And his raiment became shining, exceeding white as snow, so as no fuller on earth can white them. And there appeared unto him Eliza, or Elias, not Eliza. That's right. <laughs> And there appeared unto them Elias with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. That's Elijah is what that is. Amen. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. For he wist not what to say, for they were sore afraid. And there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. And suddenly, when they had looked around about, they saw no man anymore, save Jesus, only with themselves. And as they came down from the mountain, he charged them that they would tell no man what things they had seen till the Son of Man was risen from the dead. And they kept that saying with themselves, questioning one with another what the rising from the dead should mean. And they asked him, saying, Why say the scribes that Elias must come first? And he answered and told them, Elias verily cometh first, and restoreth all things, and how it is written of the Son of Man, that he must suffer many things, and be said it not. But I say unto you, that Elias is indeed come, and they have done unto him whatsoever they listed, as it is written of him. And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them, and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed, and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, What question he with them? Amen. And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth and gnashes with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him straightway, the spirit, and it's a little, yes, that's not talking about God's spirit. It's talking about a demon spirit that was in him. Spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowing, or wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child, and oftentimes it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. You believe that? Yes. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him so when he came out of him, and he was as one dead, insomuch that many said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's just ask the Lord to help us tonight. My God. Lord, I realize tonight I can't do anything without you. I need your help, God. Without that anointing, I'm nothing, God. I need that anointing right now, Lord. Your anointing is what breaks the yoke. Lord, I'm asking you to come into this service tonight, God, and break yokes, God. Lord, I'm asking you that you would move spirits, God, in this service that are binding folks, Lord, that you would move right now, Lord. God, I come against every unclean spirit in this place right now. I come against every spirit of hell, God, that would try to interfere tonight, God, with people's minds, with their hearts. God, I come against them in Jesus' name. Lord, I'm believing you, God, that you're going to open this place up to your spirit right now, God. We'll give you the praise and honor for it. In the name of Jesus, let's give him a hand clap of praise. I love you. Lord, I worship you, dear God. I praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You can be seated. I was going to. I thought I was going to 
teach tonight, but the Lord would not let me go that way. And I kept carrying me back to this message. Amen. Uh, I want to read this out of the East Texas version. If you'll bear with me. Then he drove it home by saying, this isn't a pie in the sky the by and by. <laughs> Some of you who are standing here are going to see it happen, see the kingdom of God arrive in full force. Six days later, three of them did see it. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up into a high mountain. His appearance changed from the inside out right before their eyes. His clothes shimmered, glistening white, whiter than any bleach could make them. Elijah, along with Moses, came into view in deep conversation with Jesus. Peter interrupted, Rabbi, this is a great moment. Oh, boy. <laughs> you know, there's some folks that just don't know how to keep their mouth shut or when to keep their mouth shut. Let's build three memorials. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. Come on, your timing is way off. He blurted this out without thinking, duh, stunned as they all were by what they were seeing. Just then, a light, radiant cloud enveloped them, and from deep in the cloud, a voice, this is my son, marked by my love. Listen to him. The next minute, the disciples were looking around, rubbing their eyes, seeing nothing but Jesus, only Jesus. That's a message by itself right there. Coming down the mountain, Jesus swore them to secrecy. Don't tell us soul what you saw. After the Son of Man rises from the dead, you're free to talk. They puzzled over that, wondering what on earth rising from the dead meant. Hmm. Never had done that before, I guess. Meanwhile, they were asking, why do the religion scholars say that Elijah has to come first? Jesus replied, Elijah does come first and get everything ready for the coming of the Son of Man. They treated this Elijah like dirt, much like they will treat the Son of Man who will, according to Scripture, suffer terribly and be kicked around contemptibly. When they came back down the mountain to the other disciples, they saw a huge crowd around them and the religious, religious scholars cross-examining them. As soon as the people in the crowd saw Jesus, admiring excitement he stirred from them. They ran and greeted him. He asked, what's going on? What's all the commotion? A man out of the crowd answered, teacher, I brought my mute son, made speechless by a demon to you. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, grinds his teeth, and goes stiff as a board. I told your disciples, hoping they could deliver him, but they couldn't. Jesus said, what a generation no sense of God. How many times do I have to go over these things? How much longer do I have to put up with this? Bring the boy here. They brought him. When the demon saw Jesus, he threw the boy into a seizure, causing him to writhe on the ground and foam at the mouth. He asked the, father, the boy's father, how long has this been going on? Ever since he was a little boy, many times it pitches him into the fire or the river to do away with him. If you can do anything, do it. Have a heart and help us. Jesus said, if, there are no ifs among believers, anything can happen. Ooh, I like that, don't you? Let me read that again. Jesus said, if, there are no ifs among believers, anything can happen. No sooner were the words out of his mouth than the Father cried, then I believe, help me with my doubts. Seeing that the crowd was forming fast, Jesus gave the vile spirit its marching orders. Dumb and deaf spirit, I command you out of him and stay out, screaming. And with much thrashing about it left. The boy was pale as a corpse, so people started saying he's dead. But Jesus, taking his hand, raised him. The boy stood up. After arriving back home, his disciples cornered Jesus and asked, Why couldn't we throw the demon out? He answered, There's no way to get rid of this kind of demon except by prayer and fasting. Hmm. Amen. I want to take my text tonight from verse 19, 20. Amen. Somewhere in that general area, I don't know. It doesn't tell you exactly what in this particular version. But Jesus said, what a generation. No sense of God. I want to preach just for a little while. A generation with no sense of God. A generation with no sense of God. And uh, several weeks ago, after I'd had the surgery on my back, I was having to sleep in a spare bedroom because my bed is, my wife and I, my bed is very soft. And uh, 
I, uh, after that back surgery, I had to have a hard bed. I felt that after about the second night of it. <laughs> of torture, laying there, tossing and turning and hurting. Severely, I figured out probably the problem was I was on a soft bed, so I went to the hard bed in the front bedroom. And uh, there had been a lot of folks that stayed in that bedroom. Andrew and Ashley stayed there for a couple of years, and there's been other folks that's been in there. But, uh, one, I was in there on about my second or third night, I guess it was. All of a sudden, I was awakened at three o'clock in the morning by a spirit in my room, and it was under my bed, and it was messing with me, poking up under the bed, under my body, raising my body up from my waist down and uh, poking around on me. And so I just told it to get lost and it did. And then uh, started praying and ended up entering into the spirit realm and uh, prayed till about 6.30 that morning in the spirit and did battle with some pretty serious sized demons that have been controlling this city for quite some time. And uh, it was after that incident that God began to deal with me and he gave me this script, this message and three or four more plus a couple of uh, Bible studies that I'm going to be doing with you guys. But when God began to deal with this, with me, with this thought, amen, we're living in a generation now that absolutely has no sense of God. I believe that and I've been uh, around for quite some time now. I'll be 60 my next birthday. And in 59 plus years, amen, of hanging in this world, I have seen a tremendous amount of change in the church world, yeah. in the world in general. In fact, most of you that are here tonight, if you've been here 30 years at least, uh, you've seen so many changes. In fact, some of you guys that's only been here in your 20s have seen so many changes in your lifetime. Amen. When we came up, uh, and I, I get tickled at Facebook because people were always posting pictures of, of dial telephones on there. Remember this? Well, yeah, I remember that. You know, pictures of cassette tape players. Remember that? Yeah, I was there when that came out. And I, I remember the first microwave oven. And, I, you know, we were just mesmerized by stuff like that, all of it. But this all scripture, the Bible said in the last days, knowledge would be increased. And uh, it has increased at an alarming rate in my lifetime. Uh, my mom died at 89 years old, and in her lifetime, she went from riding in a horse and buggy to uh, flying in a jet plane from our house, from uh, Dallas to Oregon with us, amen, in six hours' time. So uh, the world has changed vastly in the last uh, century, amen. And we're living in a generation nowadays that really doesn't have an idea of who God is, amen. And the thing that's scary in this pastor more than I think anything else is the fact that we're living in a day and hour when the church doesn't even know who God is anymore. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. We, we, the Bible said we have a form of godliness, amen, but we deny the power thereof. And that he talked about an end time church and he said from such turn away. Amen. We're living in a day and age where I have seen the church, not the ones that claim to be the church, but the church, the people in the church, go from a powerhouse. Amen. I, I, I came up in a day and age, and I, <laughs> I don't want to relive the past, but I'm telling you, if I don't bring the past back into, into focus now, right. in your eyes, amen, and get you to focus on it like we focused on it back then, yeah. amen, then you know what? I'm going to stand before God and give an account as to why I let it slip by here. Amen. And so I've got to let you know that uh, I, when my wife and I came up in the church, we came up in Embonwar, Texas. It, it was powerful. I would get off the bus in the afternoon, and I would hear people praying through the woods all around us. Amen. It wasn't just one house. It was several houses where people prayed. And, and they would be praying sometimes for hours at a time. Amen. I, I, uh, an elder preacher that everybody is familiar with, Brother Verbal Bean, I was talking to his niece one day about him and she said she remembered the time uh, when he came to their house when they lived in California and, and was preaching there and uh, she walked by his bedroom that morning and she knocked on his door and he didn't answer so she cracked the door but she's going to tell him bye she was headed for school just a kid and she said he was sitting Indian style cross-legged on the bed praying in the spirit and she said she left and went 
to school. And she came back that afternoon, and when she walked in the door, uh, she told her mom, she said, where's Uncle Verbal? And she said, he's still in his bedroom. He hadn't come out today. And she walked by, and she opened the door and cracked it and looked in, and he was still sitting in that same place, still praying in the Spirit. And we're, we, we're going to stand. But the thing that scares me is we're going to stand in judgment. Right. Amen. Against folks that knew how to walk with God. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible said the people that know their God shall do exploits. Amen. I, I hear stories all the time. Uh, I listen to preaching on the Internet a lot, and I hear stories all the time on the Internet of, of foreign countries and things that are going on over there. I heard a story, I think it was Brother Lee Stone King was uh, re reiterating a story about a young man that uh, was a Muslim that had converted that had been filled with the Holy Ghost, had been baptized in Jesus' name, and he had been captured, and uh, they had put him in prison, and uh, he knew his fate was, he was going to be put to death, and so he began to pray, and <clears throat> the story goes, he was praying in, in that prison house, and he said, Lord, I wish that I could be at least one more time stand in my living room at home with my family. And the next second he woke up and he was standing in his living room. I, I don't know how God does those things. Does God still do that? Yes, he still does. That was just recently. That happened within the last few years. Amen. Since all of this uprising has come against the Christian nations. But I want you to understand there is a power of God. Oh, come on, hear me. That dwells in those that have the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, And power shall... Oh, holy, I lost my scripture. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 said, You shall receive power yes. after that the Holy Ghost, not after that you shake a preacher's hand, not after you make a confession of faith, not after you say a sinner's prayer. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Oh, hear me. And he said, then you'll be witnesses unto me. And he names all the countries around the world. And he said, into all the world. Hallelujah. I want you to understand tonight, God has a church still. Amen. God has still got a church that is on fire for him. He's still got a people that love him with all their hearts, their mind, their soul, and strength. The, the, the problem is nowadays, amen, we have got too much of the world in our church. We've allowed ourselves to become comfortable in the world. Amen. We've allowed ourselves to be con become comfortable with the things of the world. And rather than picking up our Bible and reading it, uh, rather than finding an hour of prayer somewhere each day, uh, amen, we devote all of our time to other things uh, that we want to please our flesh with. You understand what I'm saying tonight? Uh, I'm here to tell somebody, uh, amen, it's time uh, that we begin to lay aside the things uh, that please us. Uh, Amen. God sent a message to this church through Sister Abbas McMullen here a while back. She was the first one. She called me and said, I've got a young a message I want to share with your young ministers and with your teachers. And I said, okay. And she said, I know that God has sent me with this message. And the first thing she said in our meeting on that Saturday morning, amen, was God has sent me to tell this church it's not about you. Hallelujah. It's about him. It's about his kingdom. Amen. The problem with us is, amen, we get so carnal minded that all we're interested in is doing the things that please our flesh. Amen. It's not anymore about what we do for him and how we please him that counts. Now, it's pleasing me and making myself feel good and making my flesh feel great and enjoying life and living it to the fullest. Let me tell you something. You can't backshell Jesus and expect to come back and pick him up at any time you want and expect him just to bless you and expect him just to use you and expect him just to be a part of what's going on in your life. Amen. He has to be front and center in everything we do. Yeah. Hallelujah. But we're living in a day and hour where people don't care. Amen. Daniel 11. Let's go to Luke 7. 